Alright, hey guys, welcome to another review. <clears throat> In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, Scale Train's uh, Rivet Counter uh, ET44 uh, AC, I better known as the Tier 4 Jeevo, but this one's decorated in a uh, very special scheme here because it's painted in the uh, Canadian National uh, Elgin Joliet and Eastern Heritage Scheme, number 3023. So, yeah, really cool. Uh, this is an engine I had on my radar for quite some time. Um, and Fortunately, Scale Train's got another batch of them in, so I went ahead and picked one up rather quickly. So, anyway, let's, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the review. So, uh, anyways, all uh, Scale Train's rivet counter locomotives uh, come. They come in this nicely uh, decorated cardboard box. Of course, uh, they'll uh, send you some free candy right there as well. And uh, they even sent this uh, really cool uh, print. Uh, print version of their catalog here so uh, the spring 2023 version uh, edition so uh, yeah really really cool so um, just kind of show you guys right quick what's inside here so there's of course uh, all the tier fours uh, of course there's our 3023 right there so um, yeah really really cool so just kind of quick gander at that right quick uh, now in this video because we've uh, uh, covered the Tier 4 Jeevo quite a bit uh, in past videos, uh, I'm probably not going to touch on a lot of uh, a lot of stuff here because I'd just be rehashing a lot of the things since most of the Tier 4s are basically the same aside from the paint scheme. Uh, so I'm basically just going to point out some of the little CN-isms uh, that they put on this engine. So, um, so yeah. So, like I said, most of the body, though, I'd just be rehashing it, so we'll probably uh, not cover it as much in depth here. Uh, so, anyway, uh, there's your uh, instruction manual right there for the Tier 4s. So, real quick look at that. Right there. So, yeah, I'll just really nothing new there so uh of course we'll check our foam piece out and there lies the engine inside resting in a nice plastic clamshell with a slip cover uh you got foam handrail protectors right here again looks very very nice um so what i'm going to do i'm going to pause this take the engine out and uh we're going to put it on our uh nice new turntable here check that out i know some people said i should have Got one of these while well, I found this little guy at a yard sale right here. So, yeah, he's going to be getting a workout here in the next few months. Uh, we got a lot of stuff we're going to be taking a look at before long, hopefully, anyway. So, all right, let's go ahead and get this guy out of the box and uh, review it. Hang on just a second. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back now. We got the engine uh, unpacked and on our little uh, turntable here, so we'll kind of Go around and take a look at this guy, but first I kind of want to point this out uh, as uh, as customary with uh, all scale trains, rivet counter models, you get a nice uh, package of extra bearing caps right there, which is always nice because uh, this engine does have uh, animated bearing caps, um, and it is possible to lose one every once in a while, especially if you have to service the engine. So uh, it's always nice uh, scale train sends uh, extras there um, for replacements. So. That's really cool. So, okay, let's take a look at the engine itself here. Uh, overall, very nicely done. Uh, you see the big J logo right there, which looks really, really cool. Um, we'll go ahead and kind of start at the front here. We'll spin our turntable around here. And we'll zoom in on this guy and kind of start at the front pilot. Of course, uh, you got your... Uh, MU cluster right here. I need a pointer. Uh, yeah, here's a screwdriver right here. We'll use that. So there's your MU cluster right there. Air hose right here. Very nice. There's your other MU cluster. Nice looking grab irons on the plow. Uh, this yellow jumper cable looks very nice. And you see the little uh, the little chain there uh, that's attached to it where it's uh, simulating it hanging uh, hanging up there so that's a nice little touch there 
Of course, you got the uh, scale trains river counter coupler, which is metal, by the way. Um, you know, F FYI, the uh, river counter uh, locomotives and freight cars come with the uh, metal coupler, whereas the operator series comes with a plastic coupler. So just uh, be forewarned of that. Come up here to the deck. Front handrails, again, look very, very nice. Uh, I'll tilt that up just a little bit better there. Uh, you got your front ditch lights. Now, this is where it kind of changes with the CN uh, locomotives. Notice this little light right here above the uh, conductor side ditch light. Uh, that is a DPU light. Now, when we test this locomotive out <clears throat> on the uh, layout, uh, I'll demonstrate that. But that is a really cool little feature. Um on these CN on these uh, modern CN locomotives, that's really really cool. Uh, and by the way, uh, like I said, that does function, so uh, you'll see that when we test it. So um, anyway, coming up here, of course, you get, again the uh, nice um, J uh, Elgin Joliet and Eastern logo right here looks very very good right there. So really nice. Of course, you got your step uh, grabs right there. Got some extra little grab irons right here. Again, it looks very nice. Painted a nice white color. Uh, there's the uh, grab irons on the nose there. There's the other little grab iron on the other side. Got some little decals going on right here. Looks very good. Of course, your nose-mounted headlight. Come up, continue looking up the front of the locomotive here. Nose grab irons right here again. Sand, uh, sand filler hatches, windshield, windshield wipers, all look good. Uh, got uh, got the uh, grabs around the uh, over the top of the windshield here. Again, looks very good. Nice printed number boards. Of course, you can uh, see the uh, PTC antennas right there. But and there's your uh, dome uh, GPS antenna right there. Again, looks very very good. So. We'll come down the side of this guy here. Truck detail looks very good on this side. Uh, there is a little bit of waviness right here on this uh, little pipe that uh, uh, goes over the truck, but you know that's not really a big deal. That's neat. At least to me, it's not. Uh, it might be to some people, but um, that's not really a big deal there to me. Uh, it doesn't affect the performance of the engine, which is really what I care about most. Um, but again, you know, looks really good. Um, nice little details right there on the truck. Of course, you got your shock struts, brake cylinders. Uh, all that looks good. Um, of course, again, that center axle there has a spinning bearing cap right there. A uh, really cool feature of the... Uh, Scale trains, uh, tier four, or well, really all the scale trains, uh, rear counter engines. So, all right, so there's your cab windows again, looks very good. And, uh, they've, they've really done really nice with the tinning here on this. That looks really, really good on these engines. So, yeah, that looks really nice. Of course, you got your cab sunshade there. You can probably see the antennas a little better on that, on the top there. Come down here. Nice grill detail. You got your dynamic brake grills. Uh, K5 HL air horn right there. Looks very good. Uh, you might can barely make it out, but there's some really nice walkway tread. Uh, air tanks on the on the side of the fuel tank here again looks very good. Fuel tank details look nice. So we'll come down here to this to the rear end. And again, see-through grills right here. Very nice. Always a staple of the, of the uh, Scale Trains Tier 4s. Looks very, very nice. Uh, and by the way, I did forget to point this out. There's the exhaust hatch right there. Now, this de this depicts um, a mid-production run of the Tier 4 Jeevo where you have this squared, squared off exhaust hatch. Now, the early CN, the early BNSF, um, uh, and I believe UP as well, and CSX, um, they all have this version of the tier fours. I believe Norfolk Southern is the only one that doesn't. So, um, that owns the tier four Jeevos. So, 
Um, no, I take that back. I think we can throw Kansas City Southern in there because I don't think they, I don't think they own a uh, version with a squared off exhaust hatch here either. So uh, I believe all theirs have the angled exhaust, which uh, follows the contours of the radiator section. So anyway, but we digress. That all looks very good. <clears throat> Again, as I mentioned, nice see-through grills here on the rear. Looks very, very nice right here. Of course, that gigantic radiator section right here all looks very, very nice. And truck detail looks good. Come around here to the rear right here. And we'll just kind of start here at the bottom, work our way up again. Um, very, very nice looking right here. Now, this is really cool. I didn't notice this on the... Uh, uh on here this uh rear uh i'm gonna say it's like a rear plow type thing or uh, mu uh, cluster uh pocket there um that's really cool um that's kind of something a little different on the uh, cn tier fours i didn't notice before so that's really cool uh i kind of like that that looks that looks really good of course you got your uh Scale trains, metal rivet counter coupler here. There's your MU clusters kind of tucked down in there in the cavities of this uh, plow slash uh, MU cluster. Spare knuckle holder or spare knuckle holders with the uh, spare knuckles. Again, your rear jumper cable right here. All looks very, very good. Rear ditch lights. I'll tilt that up where you can see that. All looks really good right there. There's that tread plane right there. It looks very, very nice. Got some rear grab arms there as well. Rear handrails look good. And uh, you might could also see that uh, that walkway tread. I believe this is also a uh, a CN only uh, option uh, on the tier fours. Uh, I'd have to look at the BNSF ones again, but uh, I believe this is a different tread pattern uh, CN uses on their engines. So that's really cool. Uh, seeing that so uh we'll tilt the camera up by the way you notice the uh, rear deck light right there again which does function uh we'll show that when we take it out there to the layout so we'll just kind of slowly pan up nice looking rear grab arms right there there's your rear sand filler hatch rear headlight rear grills right here these little square grills which again are see-through again looks really good Come up here to the top. Again, you got your road number right here on the rear. Again, looks very nice. And lastly, we'll look at the radiator grills that look very good. So, yeah. Really like that. So, that looks very, very good. Of course, uh, like I said, being that these does it, these things do have, uh, just a quick note of the handrails and some of the little plastic parts. Um, that is kind of one of the, uh, downsides to using plastic or, you know, uh, uh, I think it's Durlan plastic handrails and, uh, some of the piping down here is also that, uh, it does have a tendency to kind of get a little wavy. So there is kind of a little spot there. And then of course, as I mentioned on the, uh, on the uh, front truck right here on this side, and, uh, now the, now the others, the others all look good. So, um. Uh, yeah, I believe, uh, yeah, that all looks good, but like I said, uh, me personally, that's not a big deal. Uh, I've seen way worse than this, so, um, like I said, maybe you turn off some, uh, it's not to me, but you can see right there on this side, uh, that all looks good right there, so, uh, you, oh, and, uh, one other thing, uh, unlike Intermountain, uh, Scale Trains does use a, uh, fake, a fake chain, uh, as opposed to a real one that's on the uh, inner mountain. Uh, that is so you can uh, access the innards of the engine better. Uh, that one there is kind of stuck out a little bit better, but uh, it kind of needs to be bent back in. But regardless, um, that's so you can uh, access the innards of the engine a little easier. Um, that's kind of been a problem I've heard with some of the inner mountain engines is that that... Uh, that actual chain they use actually makes it a little more difficult to uh, take the body off. Um, I do have an air mountain engine that I will have to service because it's got a bad center axle on it. But uh, 
uh, that may be something we'll have to look at in the future, see how difficult it really is to get the body off of that one. But uh, anyway, um, that's really just for more e ease of maintenance uh, on these scale trains models as opposed to the inner mountains. So, all right, so we've took a look, quick look at the engine. So why don't we go ahead and uh, take it out to the layout right quick, wrap the review up, uh, and kind of show what this thing can do. So hang on just a second. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back on the layout. Ray tests this thing out, so we'll go ahead and get it started by pressing F8. Of course, you see the uh, deck lights and everything light up, and this engine also comes equipped with ground lights, which is also pro-typically pro accurate. So again, looks very, very good. I like to say you can see the uh, side walkway light there lit up. Of course, it's got a front and rear one as well. Nice light and number boards. <clears throat> So we'll uh, start by turning on the headlight. There's the headlight. There's the ditch lights. Right there again, looks very, very nice. Uh, we'll blow the horn, uh, ring the bell by pressing F1. That sounds really good. Blow the horn. Okay, that all sounds really good. Um, so we'll go ahead and kind of move it forward and backward here just a little bit. And it should start moving at speed step one. <clears throat> and I did forget to mention too, that's a very nice plow that's on the front of that engine as well. So uh, that looks really, really good. And you see it moves very nice at speed step one. You see the bearing caps... Uh, Rotating right there on the engine looks very very good So there's that guy And of course you hit f4. That's the dynamic brake You'll hear it just here in a sec So there's the dynamic brake of course to turn that sound off you just hit f4 again So we're going to go ahead and uh, move this guy forward, kind of wrap the review up, and we're going a bit long here. So, okay, that's, that's probably good. Right there. Let me uh, flip it to reverse here, where you guys can see the rear headlights, the rear ditch lights lit up. Again, looks very, very nice. Very nice and bright right there. Looks very, very good. So, you don't have to forgive me my uh, tripod's a little stiff, so I gotta hold it with both hands while I uh, turn it there. Of course, you see that little side light right there. And. There's that. So you can probably just barely see the front walkway light there lit up. So, okay. So we'll flip it back forward. Now, the feature I want to show you is uh, this little light that's right here. So I'm going to turn the ditch lights off, turn the headlights off, and then we're going to hit, uh, I believe it's function five, which should turn. Okay, well that uh, that changes the brightness on the. Uh... Oh, okay, I screwed up. Okay, so I got to have it reverse to do this. So there you go, right there. There's the uh, there's the DPU light right there. So yeah, that's really really cool, and also kind of dims the uh, ground lights as well, which is kind of a neat little feature right there. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and shut that guy off right there. Of course, you see the ground lights come back to full brightness. Uh, I don't know if that's prototypical or not on the CN engines, but that's kind of neat that it does that. So, um, so I'm going to pull this thing forward. We'll go ahead and uh, show you the rear DP lights. Okay. 
So I'll go ahead and hit F5 now. I'll show you the uh, rear uh, DP light, which will be really cool. So yeah, check that out. Does that not look awesome? That is really cool. I really like that. You see how bright it is. I mean, it's it's uh, lighting the, the the track up right here. So that, that that's really really neat. So yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, super cool engine from Scale Trains. Uh, again, their, their tier fours have always been great. Um, I've never had any issues out of them, even since back to the early days with the uh, V4 version equipped, the uh, 3911, the BNSF 3911, which was my first uh, scale trains rivet counter engine. So, yeah, the tier fours have always been great uh, scale trains. So, all right, guys, I'll take a look at the review and. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this quick look at the uh, Canadian National Elgin Joliet and Eastern Heritage Unit. Uh, we got a lot more cool stuff coming down the way, including a review from a brand new manufacturer to the hobby. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, really cool stuff. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed the review, guys, and we'll catch you on down the road. So, take care, all. Bye for now.